let's change uh, gears just a bit and talk about a little bit more complicated case. I think as we go through, we'll probably do a total of three cases, but this is a little bit more complicated case. So this is a 63-year-old woman uh, who had increased thickening of her outer left breast for approximately the last year. Uh, and uh, she noted a mass underneath that had been enlarging over the last month. Uh, she had a little bit of mild dyspnea on exertion, but no bone pain. Uh, on exam, she had a six centimeter mass of the left breast uh, with some dimpling and contraction of the underlying skin. Uh, she was staged with a PET CT, uh, and aside from the uptake in the breast mass, uh, she was found to have multiple areas of metastatic disease uh, in her uh, thoracic lumbar spine as well as hips. Uh, there were no obvious areas of impending fracture in any long bone. Uh, so the question now is, what do you do uh, for this lady? Um, Sarah, you want to take that one? <laughs> um, you know, for her, it sounds like she's had this, it's, it's not an inflammatory presentation. She's had this mass she's ignored for over a year. So that, that's a key component of the history. You don't give us the KI-67 or the grade of the tumor. Oh, correct, I, I did, right. So let's, yeah. say, let's say she did have a biopsy, I'm sorry. <laughs> and she had an ER, her ER was strongly positive. Uh, um, and we use what's called an H score in Pittsburgh. It's very mm -hmm. similar to an all red score, mm -hmm. and the H score was 300 indicating that 100% of the cells were 3 plus for ER. Um, she also was PR positive, and her HER2 was negative by IHC and FISH. Her FISH ratio was like 1.02. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So, you know, I think that for her, it's important to put her on a bone stabilizing agent. Um, and uh, I would probably proceed with endocrine therapy as long as she is not having um, symptoms or signs on physical examination that the breast mass is going to break through the skin and become a locally um, difficult problem to manage or having severe pain in the bones requiring radiation. I think that using a bone stabilizer in combination probably in her I would consider an aromatase inhibitor with fulvestrant. This would be just the type of patient because I think the responses seem to be a little bit more generous and the progression-free survival, is, as we saw, um, at least from the SWOG study, in a primarily uh, tamoxifen-naive patient population, were, were positive, um, and overall, for the overall survival. It's interesting you mentioned about if the tumor was not a problem locally, because we've had a couple of patients, and one just went to the operating room, who had worked for a bunch of doctors we knew, but she had this slow-growing breast mass she just was ignoring. And so she, the reason why she came to the emergency room was because she was so anemic, she needed to be transfused because she had been bleeding oh. through her breast mass, strongly ERPR positive, HER2 negative. We gave her an aromatase inhibitor, and a year later she had a path CR. Whoa. She had no tumor left. So occasionally these tumors can erode through the skin and not be, like she didn't have one of those huge inflammatory breasts right. and uh, just had locally eroded through the skin and still had a phenomenal response. Right, right. The other thing I would consider for that patient is, you know, the pal, uh, palbociclib uh, trial with a CDK inhibitor uh, because uh, uh, patients who haven't had an aromatase inhibitor, a non steroidal aromatase inhibitor, or had exemestane more than a year ago, or had tamoxifen when they relapsed and they're postmenopausal, can go on that trial, which is letrozole or letrozole plus the CDK inhibitor. So that's another option for a patient like this. This would be a terrific patient for that, yeah. Would anybody give this lady chemo, Joyce? No, no, I wouldn't. I would um, give her, I probably would err on the side of the uh, fulvestrant and AI combination, recognizing I'll be a little, little outside of uh, level one evidence because I would pick the 500 of the fulvestrant, mm -hmm. a little out of them. Um, uh, level one evidence there, but you want to optimize her endocrine therapy and keep her on it for a very long time, like you did hope with the one year before you went to surgery, because it, it can keep getting better, right, for, for a long period of time. So it's interesting. I just want to add something. So all of us in this room probably...